redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ephesians 5.16 The startling words of the 14th verse must be linked with these of the 16th. It is expected of one who is awake and has risen that he should redeem the time. Sleepers may waste it, he must redeem it. Can we be awake and yet not redeem the time? The Apostle's word here is a very strong one. It is the strongest of all the words that signify to redeem, and is used only four times in the New Testament, Galatians 3.13, 4.5, Colossians 4.5, Ephesians 5.16. It does not mean simply to buy, but to buy out of, or buy up from, as when Christ is said to have bought us out from the curse of the law, buying out those who were held fast by that curse. The expression redeeming the time corresponds exactly to that used in Daniel 2.8. I know of certainty that ye would gain, buy up the time. Looking at the word then in this sense, let us call solemn attention to this redemption, this buying up of time. I am large about redeeming time, said Richard Baxter, because therein the sum of a holy obedient life is included. It was an ancient custom to put an hourglass into the coffin as an emblem of time run out. I stopped, says a writer of the last century, in Clerkenwell churchyard to see a grave digger at work. He had dug pretty deep and was come to a coffin which was quite rotten. In clearing away the rotten pieces of wood, the gravedigger found an hourglass close to the left side of the skull with sand in it, the wood of which was so rotten that it broke when he took hold of it. A strange custom this, to notify to the dead that their time was at an end. Of what profit could such a warning be coming thus too late? It is to the living that we would present the hourglass. It is the living that we would warn of the swift rush of time. Moments and years, moments and years. With what speed do they hurry away? O oh, time, 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 how soon will it be done? Men and brethren look at that hourglass emptying itself grain by grain with such unstaying eagerness. Living men, you will soon be with the dead or the last trumpet will be sounding, and where will you be, and what is your hope? But look at the Apostle's words, redeem the time. 1. Buy it out of the hands of those who are casting it away. Time, like a wide, fair garden of flowers, spreads out before the children of men, but they trample down its flowers. Time, like a vast treasure house, opens its stores of gold and silver, but they fling them away buy them up lose nothing wasted time stands at the very head of the world's long catalogue of sins be warned men waste time do you use it they fling it away gather it up whatever those that are asleep may do those whom the apostle calls fools verse fifteen it becomes you who profess to be awake to use it well redeem the time two buy it up so as to lose not a moment as the reaper with his sickle carefully cuts down and binds up the corn of autumn, so do you with time. As the gleaner follows the reaper, picking up each scattered ear of grain, so do you glean up each moment of time. For each one is precious, too precious to be lost, or slept away, or laughed away, or danced away, or sported away, or talked away, or idled away. Gather up the very smallest fragment, that nothing may be lost, for each lost moment tells upon eternity. So many moments lost on earth, so many moments lost for heaven and lost forever, redeem the time. 3. Buy it up, so as to lay hold of each opportunity as it turns up, for the word time refers as much to opportunity as to time itself. Be on the eager watch for opportunities. Allow none to slip from you. Seize upon each one. Improve them all. It has been said that there is a tide in the affairs of men which must be taken at its height or else all is lost. 
but in truth there is not one tide merely but many they may in one sense and for certain things be but one tide but in another view there are tides not a few each day each hour has its tides its critical moments its opportunities its seasons which must be seized on at the moment or lost for ever might we not endeavour each morning to forecast a little and consider what opportunities may lie before us and be ready to seize each one as it passes for it passes us as the rushing river it passes us as the swift bird it passes us as the winged lightning be ready to lay hold on it redeem the time four buy it up so as to have all in readiness against the evil day as joseph bought up the corn in the land of egypt as generals draw together all manner of stores into some city or fortress against the day of war and siege so do you the evil day is at hand nay it has already begun there is not a moment to be lost make ready for the worst remember that preparation for an evil day consists much in redeeming time if this be neglected then that day will not only come upon you unawares but it will come as the avenger of your wasted hours redeem the time five buy it up so as to make rapid progress in your heavenward journey on this there must be no loiterings you cannot afford to linger time is too brief the way is too rugged the journey is too important the risk of failure is too terrible the reward is too bright and glorious to allow any such lingering press onwards make sure that you are really advancing see that you are becoming holier in your spirit heavenlier in your walk and more like the master in your whole character and deportment pray more love more trust more be more self-denied and unworldly mortify your members which are upon the earth crucify the flesh with its affections and lusts redeem the time six buy it up so as to be more useful in the world it is not a life of fame and greatness that you are called to but to one of usefulness you may not be able to do or to speak great things but you can be useful see that you keep this in view o oh, pray to be kept from an unprofitable wasted life pray for a useful life however humble nay despised and obscure let your aim each morning as you rise be to spend a useful day redeem the time seven buy it up so that by means of it you may be laying up treasure in heaven wasted time is gold irrecoverably thrown away cast into the fathomless ocean from which it can never be brought up wasted time is not merely lost for a lifetime but lost for eternity each lost hour tells upon eternity and makes you poorer for ever it robs you of everlasting treasure for time redeemed is treasure laid up in heaven time redeemed is treasure multiplied a thousandfold to us so that when we reach the kingdom we not merely find all our treasure that we had there before us but we find it increased and magnified far beyond what we could have conceived time lost on earth is blessedness lessened in heaven time lost is glory lost but time redeemed is so much glory gained time lost will place us lower in the kingdom supposing that we do enter it give us a dimmer crown a poorer inheritance a narrower range of dominion but time redeemed will place us higher in the kingdom will add brightness to our crown and extend the limits and the glory of our incorruptible inheritance the inheritance of the saints in light oh is it not then worth our while to lay these things to heart to consider how much we gain for eternity by buying up our moments here redeem the time we waste our time in many ways in sloth or sleep or idleness or ill-regulated hours and employment in frivolous amusements unprofitable books reading that does nothing for the soul in incessant visiting going from house to house instead of being keepers at home or workers for god vain conversation gossiping foolish talking and jesting in all these ways we fling away our precious hours killing time 
as it is fashionable to call it, forgetting that the killing of time is the murdering of eternity. Oh, is it wise thus to waste our brief life here? Is it like reasonable beings thus to cast aside as useless one of God's best gifts, sent us in love to enable us to prepare for his kingdom? Think how strong and many are the reasons for redeeming time. We have but one life. Shall we waste it? Had we many, we might do so with less of folly and guilt, but we have only one, one lifetime, one measured circle of days and hours, beyond which not an hour or day is ours. And then our time is so short, a few years, that a child may count up, and then all is over. A span, a handbreadth, a vapour, a shadow, a tale that is told. Such is man's brief life. In this brief life there is a great work to do. Each one has his own work, and no one is left without something to do for God. This great work is to fill up our span. It is something which cannot be trifled with, or thrust into a corner, or done by fits and starts. It is something to be gone about solemnly and steadily, as realizing what our time was given for. And there are many hindrances. Each day flings them across our path, or fastens them upon us, to drag us backward. Temptations, enemies, allurements, self-indulgence, stumbling blocks, snares of every kind and name, all to hinder us, to slacken our hands, or retard our speed, or lead us to take our ease, or tempt us to despair. More than ever now in these last days, for they are evil, nay, getting worse and worse, enemies multiplying, hindrances increasing, darkness deepening. Yes, the days are evil. Oh, let us bestir ourselves and be in earnest. Let us redeem the time. Are you saved already, reader, in believing? Become one with the mighty Saviour. Then press on with all your might. Seek to be holy, to get quit of sin, to live separate from the world, to grow in grace, to mortify your members which are upon the earth, to have your eye upon the coming kingdom with its glorious King. Seek to save others. Go not to heaven alone. Watch and pray and labor for the souls of the unsaved. Are you yet among the unsaved? Then lose no time. Yonder is the hiding place. It is not far off, and it is open and free. It has sheltered thousands already, and why should not you too enjoy that shelter? Many voices bid you welcome. The voice of a Saviour's love above, and the voice of those who learn to love that Saviour here each passing hour each setting sun each closing year these bid you welcome and urge you to delay no more o oh, come and taste and see that the lord is good for it is but receiving this goodness of his giving credit to the tidings of freedom which the cross has made known and the line is crossed which separates you from the kingdom o oh, sinner will you not step across that line and be saved end of redeem the time by Horatius Bonar. Redeem the Time by Horatius Bonar. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.